some of you come up to my office and visit with me during the week? Bobby was up there this morning. He can testify to what I'm going to say. The name of the top of my desk is Chaos. Yes. And yet, in the midst of that chaos, you can find what you're looking for, can't you? It's there. You can find it. Because you know my chaos. It's ordered chaos, isn't it? Amen, sister? It's ordered chaos. I remember one time when I was a teenager, one of my first jobs was to clean a construction office where my dad worked. It was my first job with Fru and Collin Construction Company. I did it my senior year in high school. And I went into this electrical planner's office and I saw his desk. Well, I didn't see his desk. I saw what was stacked on his desk and around his desk. And it took me 20 minutes, but I got all his papers in a nice neat pile and all the pins and pencils back in the drawer and uh, all the blueprints that he had out. Well, I had them all rolled back and put on the rack. The next day in homeroom, I could hear him scream from that construction site. He told me later on when I went to work full time for Brew and Collin Construction Company that it took him six months to be able to find everything that he was looking for to get that desk back to where it was. It was chaos, but there was order in the chaos. We understand that, don't we? So when you come up to my office and you see me behind stacks of paper or stacks of paper behind me or books that I've read or books that I want to read and it's all there, first thing, please understand, it's my chaos. And it's ordered and I understand what's going on there. The second thing I ask you to never do is move anything. Because I will need to lay my hands on that at some point in the future. Maybe not. Um, Maybe not. I know there are those of you who have been urging me to move chaos from up there to down here. But then I have to straighten up chaos up there. And I'm afraid I'm going to lose what I need to find what I'm looking for. This morning in the scripture, it's about ordering chaos from the book of Genesis, isn't it? There's a good picture of chaos on the oceans. You see it's kind of dark and the clouds are swirling around. And the, they're on the face of the deep, there is waves going up and down. I don't like the version of the scripture that we read this morning because it doesn't call it chaos. But um, in, in Hebrew, what was going on there before God began to order anything, it was called chaos. It was formless. It was dark. And there was no order to it quite yet, was there? It was chaos. But it did say one thing was happening. God was moving across the face of that chaos. Amen? God was in the midst of that chaos, getting ready to make it orderly. One of my favorite programs is called Mysteries of the Universe. It's on the Science Channel. For those of you who get direct TV, or it may even be on the other cable networks, I don't know. But the Mysteries of the Universe, and the Secrets of the Universe, they go out to where the Big Bang so took place and to see how ordered everything has become. If there was a Big Bang, as scientists say, and if things were just strewn out in chaos, God sure has ordered them since. Hmm? Planets rotate where they're supposed to rotate. Yeah. You know why I think God has placed us so far from other galaxies and other places where there might be lines? Because God knows that we tend to war with one another and fight with one another. I think if there's other living life out there, God placed it far away from us so that we wouldn't fight. God brought order to the universe. Everything is where it should be. And even when you look out and you see that there are new, new galaxies forming from explosions of suns and things are, poor, are, are still in chaos in some part. The move is always in our universe from chaos to order. From chaos to order. And from chaos to order. And here's the beginning of our Bible. And the very first chapter, the very first sentence says that when it all began, there was 
chaos. And God's first job was to make order out of chaos. And the scripture says that it was formless. And it was empty. And it was dark. My life could be described in some of those terms from time to time. Couldn't it? Have you ever known chaos in your life? That looks like my brain on some days. Amen? Amen. How about yours? When the water's choppy or the clouds are so thick you don't know quite where you're going to go or what you're going to do, the sun just ain't shining today for you. Vicki, uh, I was having trouble at the annual conference. I, oh, I didn't know where to go for one of the things that pastors had to go to. And I didn't have my map. And my mind was in chaos. And I told Vicki about it. And she said, man, it sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> That's chaos when your own wife looks and said, I wouldn't want to be you. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes right now. That's the no chaos in your life. But... This godly woman, she came up to me and she said, Pastor Gary, she said, you look lost. And I said, I am. And she said, what do you need? I need to go to the quilt room. That's where the pastors were reading. She said, turn around. So I turned around. She said, that building right in front of you, go to the doors and turn right when you get inside. That's the building. My heart lightened. You know, I'm kind of retentive, if you know what I mean. I'm a person that likes to be on time. I like to be in the right place. And my nightmare would be to walk into a class and it was the wrong one. <clears throat> and I'm late getting there. That is a definition of chaos. I hear this fine person came, turned me around, and put me in the right direction, and brought order to my chaos in a loving way. Have you known chaos in your life? Maybe your health hasn't been what it should be and you can't see the end of the problem. You don't know, I've tried this medicine and it doesn't work and I've tried this medicine or I'm suffering with an illness and I can't get any medicine at all because the insurance company won't pay for it or they made it so expensive that I couldn't touch it. Or I just can't afford the insurance to have any medical care at all. You've known that chaos. Maybe it's a chaos in personal relationships. We studied this morning in the Bible study the chaos of the parable of the prodigal son. What that father must have been feeling, what that, those parents must have been feeling as their son went off and, and blew his inheritance. I've known that sort of chaos with rebellious children, haven't you? Haven't you ever had? Shake your head. If you raise children, don't tell me that they didn't rebel. Huh? Not yours, right? No. You know what a rebellious child is? When you're going in the grocery store and you're pushing that cart down the aisle and you hear some kid in the next aisle whooping it up and hollering it up, you go, man, I'm glad that ain't my kid. And then you turn around and yours is missing. <laughs> right? That's chaos, isn't it? Suddenly your worldly world is child and you. My child would never do that. They're the one opening up the marshmallows in aisle four, right? We've had rebellious kids. We've known illness. Maybe you've lost a job that you weren't expecting to lose but suddenly you find yourself unemployed, that will cause chaos in your life in a hurry, won't it? And God says in this scripture, in the midst of that chaos, I'm still there. You see the dark clouds that are swirling, you see the, the, lead, the, the waves, they're, they're being tossed up into the air, but the scripture says that God is blowing over the face of them. God is in the midst of the chaos. Now we all can see God when things are going well. When things are going well, it's easy to walk through the path of life and sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's harder in the midst of the chaos 
for us to calm down enough to hear Jesus say, Peace, be still. And yet isn't Jesus the one who calms the waves? Isn't Jesus the one who stilled the waters? The Gospel according to John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then the Gospel according to John says that that Word was the light. Right? That that Word was the light that came to illumine all people. Listen to what the first thing is that happens to this chaos. The Spirit of God was sent over the waters and light was created. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now understand something. The sun hasn't been created yet. The moon hasn't been created. The stars have not been created yet. We're still in the chaos stage, yes? This light is simply existing because God commanded it. And you have to see how quickly it happens. If you can understand the sense of the Hebrew there, it's God said it was just that quick. God said it. The minute God said it, it happened. Let there be light, boom, light. Didn't take an hour. You didn't have to wait for God. When God said, let there be light, there was light. And what happened to chaos? It was dispelled. The chaos disappeared because God said, let there be light. It was the first command in the beginning of ending this chaos. And God starts with light. Now, do you understand the gospel according to John? In the beginning was the Word, and John calls that Word light. And the Word was, let there be light. And it dispels the darkness. It dispelled the formlessness. It filled the emptiness of that chaos and began to bring order to it. How many times have you needed God's light to shine inside of you? In how many circumstances of our life have we needed God to come into our life and say, let there be light. Let the waves be calm. Let the chaos be dispelled. Let order be brought to this situation. It may not even be that the situation was totally resolved. But with light, you can see the end of the tunnel, can't you? It starts with the creation of that light. Let there be light. And where there is light, there is no darkness. There is no chaos. There is no formlessness. Light cannot take place without light. Amen? Isn't that true? I just got done reading not long ago in National Geographic. It was talking about the super caldera under the uh, uh, Yellowstone Park. And... It's due for an eruption, my friends. And what this, article, what this article was saying is that the ground in Yellowstone is starting to rise, which means all those magma chambers under the ground are filling. And this, this thing is due to explode. Last time it <clears throat> exploded, they are finding ash in Nebraska from the last time this thing exploded. Do you know how much darkness must have filled the skies when that thing went off? And this darkness in areas away from the caldera, away from what would have been burned by the blast, things died because there was no light. When God brings light into the chaos, God brings light into the chaos. There's so many things that we think steal life from us. The chaos of our lives. Sometimes we'll let that steal life from us. Life that should be good. Life should, should be meaningful. Life that should be rich and deep and enjoyable because we remember we're standing in the presence of God, but we forget it because of the chaos that's brewing in our lives. 
And in the midst of that, God comes to us and says, let there be light. Let there be light so you can see the end of the tunnel. Let there be light so that you'll know that there's a resolution to your chaos. Let there be light so that you know that I am standing with you and I am bigger than the chaos that you think is going to swamp your boat. In the midst of this light, this light, I'll say, peace be still. In the midst of this light, I will give you abundant life. I'll give you life that's deeper and richer and more meaningful than any life you've ever known. I'll overcome the chaos. I'll help you to weather the storm so that you can look at your life and say, even with the problems, yes, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to live. It's a blessing to walk in the light. It's a blessing to know that God goes with me, that God is in the boat with me. Do you remember the disciples in the boat? And Jesus is in the boat and the stormy sea and the disciples are tearing their hair out. I can see them bailing with whatever they had. And where's Jesus? He's asleep in the front of the boat. Now my friends, let me tell you something. If you're in a boat on a stormy sea and Jesus is in that boat with you, waking or sleeping, don't worry. Amen? It's going to be all right. That boat is not going to go down with Jesus in it. Isn't that true? That boat can be the leakiest boat on the Sea of Galilee, but it's not going to go down if Jesus is in it. And what do they do? They wake him up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's chaos all around us. We're going to die. The boat's going to sink. Jesus, Jesus, wake up. You can see Jesus. How long? How long am I going to have to be <clears throat> with you before you understand the boat won't sink while I'm sitting in it? What's it going to take? Let there be the light of knowledge and the light of faith that reminds us always that Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in the boat. Chaos can be ordered. Light can dispel the darkness. Light can show us the form of Jesus adding order to our circumstance. Light makes all things possible again and brings light to the situation. God calls our name in that storm and says, don't worry. Don't be afraid. I'm in the chaos. I'm the breeze. I'm the wind that's blowing over the water and bringing order to it. I'm that spirit that's blowing across the water in the, in the darkness and bringing light and order to it. Don't worry. I know your life. And it's in my hands. And the boat won't sink while I'm in it. Hard thing to remember sometimes. But that's how Jesus makes order out of our chaos. <clears throat> that's how we find abundant life, even when we are surrounded by things that want to take the life from us, that want to make our life seem so much worse than what it really is. There is a person in this church this morning who is blessed. There isn't a person in this church this morning that Jesus is not in your boat with you. There isn't a person in this life, in this church right now who Jesus doesn't want to illuminate the chaos that's in your life and bring order to it. You have one obligation. Remember Jesus is in the chaos with you. Remember that Jesus is in the boat. And there's something I want you to repeat as I close this so that you'll always remember. I'll say it and then we'll say it together. If Jesus is in the boat, the boat won't sink. Together? If Jesus is in the boat, the boat won't sink. In Jesus' name, amen.